Ernst Waldfried Joseph Wenzel Mack, German, NST Maximum, February 18, 1838 to February 19, 1916, was an Austrian physicist and philosopher, noted for his contributions to physics such as the Mach number and the study of shock waves. As a philosopher of science, he was a major influence on logical positivism, and through his criticism of Newton, a forerunner of Einstein's relativity. Biography Ernst Waldfried Joseph Wenzel Mack was born in Brno Kreis, German, Cholitz, Moravia, then in the Austrian Empire, now part of Brno in the Czech Republic. His father, who had graduated from Charles University in Prague, acted as tutor to the noble Brethen family in Zlin, eastern Moravia. His grandfather, Wenzel Landhaus, an administrator of the estate Cholitz, was also master builder of the streets there. His activities in that field later influenced the theoretical work of Ernst Mack. Some sources give Mack's birthplace as Turis slash Tuany, now also part of Brno, the site of the Cholitz Registry Office. Peregrine Weiss baptized Ernst Mack into the Roman Catholic Church in Turis slash Tuany. Despite his Catholic background, he later became an atheist. Up to the age of 14, Mack received his education at home from his parents. He then entered a gymnasium in Kromi, German, Kremse, where he studied for three years. In 1855 he became a student at the University of Vienna. There he studied physics, and for one semester medical physiology, receiving his doctorate in physics in 1860 and his habilitation the following year. His early work focused on the Doppler effect in optics and acoustics. In 1864 he took a job as professor of mathematics in Graz, having turned down the position of a chair in surgery at the University of Salzburg to do so, and in 1866 he was appointed as professor of physics. During that period, Mack continued his work in psychophysics, and in sensory perception. In 1867, he took the chair of experimental physics at the Charles University, Prague, where he stayed for 28 years, before returning to Vienna. Mack's main contribution to physics involved his description and photographs of spark shock waves, and then ballistic shock waves. He described how when a bullet or shell moved faster than the speed of sound, it created a compression of air in front of it. Using Sclerin photography, he and his son Ludwig were able to photograph the shadows of the invisible shock waves. During the early 1890s Ludwig was able to invent an interferometer which allowed for much clearer photographs. But Mack also made many contributions to psychology and physiology, including his anticipation of Gestalt phenomena, his discovery of the oblique effect, and of Mack bands, an inhibition-influenced type of visual illusion, and especially his discovery of a non-acoustic function of the inner ear which helps control human balance. One of the best known of Mack's ideas is the so-called Mack principle, concerning the physical origin of inertia. This was never written down by Mack, but was given a graphic verbal form, attributed by Philip Frank to Mack himself, as, when the subway jokes, it's the fixed stars that throw you down. Mack also became well known for his philosophy developed in close interplay with his science. Mack defended a type of phenomenalism recognizing only sensations as real. This position seemed incompatible with the view of atoms and molecules as external, mind-independent things. He famously declared, after an 1897 lecture by Ludwig Boltzmann at the Imperial Academy of Science in Vienna, I don't believe that atoms exist. From about 1908 to 1911 Max's reluctance to acknowledge the reality of atoms was criticized by Maximum Planck as being incompatible with physics. Einstein's 1905 demonstration that the statistical fluctuations of atoms allowed measurement of their existence without direct individuative sensory evidence marked a turning point in the acceptance of atomic theory. Some of Mack's criticisms of Newton's position on space and time influenced Einstein, but later Einstein realized that Mack was basically opposed to Newton's philosophy, and concluded that his physical criticism was not sound. In 1898 Mack suffered from cardiac arrest, and in 1901 retired from the University of Vienna, and was appointed to the upper chamber of the Austrian parliament. On leaving Vienna in 1913 he moved to his son's home in Vitterstetten, near Munich, where he continued writing and corresponding until his death in 1916. His current living descendant is Marilyn Vos Savant, her father was Joseph Mack. Physics
most of Mack's initial studies in the field of experimental physics concentrated on the interference, diffraction, polarization, and refraction of light in different media under external influences. There followed his important explorations in the field of supersonic velocity. Mack's paper on this subject was published in 1877 and correctly describes the sound effects observed during the supersonic motion of a projectile. Mack deduced and experimentally confirmed the existence of a shock wave which has the form of a cone with the projectile at the apex. The ratio of the speed of projectile to the speed of sound VP slash VS is now called the Mach number. It plays a crucial role in aerodynamics and hydrodynamics. He also contributed to cosmology the hypothesis known as Mach's principle. Philosophy of Science from 1895 to 1901, Mack held a newly created chair for the history and philosophy of the inductive sciences at the University of Vienna. In his historico-philosophical studies, Mack developed a phenomenalistic philosophy of science which became influential in the 19th and 20th centuries. He originally saw scientific laws as summaries of experimental events, constructed for the purpose of making complex data comprehensible, but later emphasized mathematical functions as a more useful way to describe sensory appearances. Thus scientific laws while somewhat idealized, have more to do with describing sensations than with reality as it exists beyond sensations. The goal which it, physical science, has set itself is the simplest and most economical abstract expression of facts. When the human mind, with its limited powers, attempts to mirror in itself the rich life of the world, of which it itself is only a small part, and which it can never hope to exhaust, it has every reason for proceeding economically. In reality, the law always contains less than the fact itself, because it does not reproduce the fact as a whole, but only in that aspect of it which is important for us, the rest being intentionally, or from necessity omitted. In mentally separating a body from the changeable environment in which it moves, what we really do, is to extricate a group of sensations on which our thoughts are fastened and which is of relatively greater stability than the others, from the stream of all our sensations. Suppose we were to attribute to nature the property of producing like effects in like circumstances, just these like circumstances we should not know how to find. Nature exists once only. Our schematic mental imitation alone produces like events. Max positivism also influenced many Russian Marxists, such as Alexander Bogdanov, 1873 to 1928. In 1908, Lenin wrote a philosophical work, Materialism and Imperio Criticism, published 1909, in which he criticized Machism and the views of Russian Machists. In accordance with this philosophy, Mack opposed Ludwig Boltzmann and others who proposed an atomic theory of physics. Since one cannot observe things as small as atoms directly, and since no atomic model at the time was consistent, the atomic hypothesis seemed to Mack to be unwarranted, and perhaps not sufficiently economical. Mack had a direct influence on the Vienna Circle philosophers and the school of logical positivism in general. Mack is attributed with a number of principles that distill his ideal of physical theorization, what is now called Machian physics. One point it should be based entirely on directly observable phenomena, in line with his positivistic leanings. Two point it should completely eschew absolute space and time in favor of relative motion. Three point any phenomena that would seem attributable to absolute space and time, for instance inertia and centrifugal force, should instead be seen as emerging from the large scale distribution of matter in the universe. The last is singled out, particularly by Albert Einstein as the Max principle. Einstein cited it as one of the three principles underlying general relativity. In 1930, he stated that it is justified to consider Mach as the precursor of the general theory of relativity, though Mach, before his death, would reject Einstein's theory. Einstein was aware that his theories did not fulfill all Mach's principles, and no subsequent theory has either, despite considerable effort. Physiology In 1873, independently of each other Mach and the physiologist and physician Joseph Brewer discovered how the sense of balance, that is, the perception of the head's imbalance, functions, tracing its management by information, which the brain receives from the movement of a fluid in the semicircular canals of the inner ear. That the sense of balance depended on the three semicircular canals was discovered in 1870 by the physiologist Friedrich Goltz, but Goltz didn't discover how the balance sensing apparatus functioned. Psychology 
and the area of sensory perception, psychologists remember Mac for the optical illusion called the Mac band. More clearly than anyone before, or even since, Mac made the distinction between what he called physiological, specifically visual, and geometrical spaces. Mac's views on mediating structures inspired B.F. Skinner's strongly inductive position, which paralleled Mac's in the field of psychology. Eponyms the lunar crater Mac takes its name from Ernst Mac. So does the visual illusion and the unit for the velocity of sound. The visual illusion and the